Good morning. For those who don't know me, my name is Jeannie, and I talk about my life. I'm a wellness advocate and a home economist, so I also talk about different things. Today, I want to talk about something that many people experience in their lives. Maybe it'll help you. Maybe it'll help me. I don't know, but it needs to be said. Yesterday was a very hard, hard day for me. I had lost the love of my life on the 20th. We had a long time relationship of 12 years. Most of it was long distance relationship, but that doesn't really matter because the love was just as deep and strong. I talked to him every night for two or three hours. I started feeling concerned when he would go walking every night. He was a very, very private man. And so if he has to walk, maybe he has a heart condition. Okay. I thought about that. But I also thought about that um, without being political, um, many people are falling dead from heart disease. Uh, due to the so why did he die was it because he had developed heart disease was it because of the past two years in the past two years Yes, it could be because we have suffered so much stress. So much stress has been put upon us. I, I am going to write something about stress and I am going to do something about the steps of grief because I have to work my way through with this. But getting to yesterday Yesterday was so hard for me. I went to Bunnell back in, oh, was it 2019? I bought a house and Michael was with me with the closing. So that I couldn't stay around the house because that was very emotional. And I drove down the road and I just wanted to die. That, that was, what is the purpose of life when you don't have the one you love with you? The hurricane came shortly after his death. And I was thinking to myself, oh, is it going to be time for me to go and meet him? Well, I, last time I looked, I think the death count was up to a thousand. But by the time the hurricane got to me, it was just a tropical storm. It was very strong. And if you looked around the property, you would see no damage whatsoever. So, says, okay, God, you didn't take me in the storm. Kind of hoping he would. Because I really didn't want to spend my life without him. And that was exactly the way I was feeling yesterday. And I was having a very hard time driving. I had no business driving yesterday, but I had something I had to do. 
And since I had to do that, I went to the beach. The beach really lifted my spirits because I remembered some happy moments. But on the way to the beach, you know, I couldn't see, hardly see the red lights or the flagmen in the road. I have macular degeneration. And when my stress level is high, <laughs> so is my blindness. And I was all alone, having to deal with this all alone. Then I got angry with my daughter. She should be supporting me like I supported her when she lost her husband in 2019. But all she said to me was condolences. I haven't seen her in a year or more, more than a year. And she lives here in the same city with me. And I say to myself, why am I here? I should have been back in Oklahoma. I should have never came. I gave up my land to help her meet her financial needs. Yes, I have a nice home now because of the sacrifice I made. I don't regret the sacrifice I made, but I do feel anger. Why aren't you helping me through my grief? Right now, what am I in shock? And I can't even say I'm in shock because he started his walking routine that gave me a hint. And we would talk on the phone for two or three hours every day. And then he started with regret at the 1st of September. He had regret. He regretted that he let me come to Florida. But if I hadn't come to Florida, maybe nothing would have changed. My long wish was that we marry. And he said, I'm the kind of man who has to be married. And I kind of think to myself, well, aren't you kind of married anyway because you live with your ex-wife to support your children and your grandchildren? And, and he's, the grandchildren are getting big now. <laughs> and, the, and, and the children aren't young anymore and they're starting to think better and be better parents. And he asked me to marry him. Oh, the, the joy was so great. But I had kind of decided that I had needed to move on with my own life. And we had talked about me getting a new man in my life because I didn't I was tired of being alone and tired of the rejection and tired of the aban abandonment that he had given me anyway. And he says, okay, it's good that I have someone in my life, but he's going to marry me and wait. I needed to live my life until he got here. But that, that kind of talk always made me angry. But he got, oh, I don't know. It's hard to talk about him. But I'm going to talk more about me. He's gone, but he's not gone. Because I believe that 
we don't die and go nowhere. We don't die and, and just turn to dirt or return to the stars. Our spirit moves from our body and our spirit lingers on earth. You know, we have, I'm not the only one grieving over him. And I, I truly believe that um, he's watching over me, his children and his grandchildren to help us get through our grief. Every, every night I send him a text because his phone is still working and I tell him I love him. The longest, in, in all the years we've be, been together, the longest he's ever not spoken to me was for four months. And my conclusion why he didn't do that was because he had a lot of stress and he didn't love me it's the way I loved him. So now I am not that far in to his parting. So, am I going to come to grips with this in two months? Am I going to come to grips with this now? I see, I don't see him, but I feel him. I hear words in my mind. And then I, I think, maybe I'm going to go crazy. But... At the same time, I know that when my father, my grandmother, and uh, my uncle died and my sister died, I saw them. So it's not impossible that uh, in my sixth sense, that I'm feeling him here with me. And it makes me smile. But I'm not going to kill myself, even though <clears throat> I feel like it at times. That uh, life is nothing without him on the other end of the telephone. So I may come on the phone on, on YouTube and talk about this a lot. And um, I'll have my comments section open because I know I'm not the only one who's suffering the loss of a loved one. I, I will work on the steps of grief. I still have a lot of videos that's been requested from me that I need to do. But, you know, I'll get them done. I, I don't know when I'll get them done, but I will get them done. I'm a person who who stands by her word. I'm not sure what my next stage is of grief. I know with Bob, I got angry. I don't see myself getting angry with Mike because the way our relationship was, was a lot of my doing. I had control of this relationship and I could have put my foot down. And it could have been different. But don't want to change anybody to get them to love you or spend your life with you. You just want everything to take its natural course. I think 
that he knew. I think he had a premonition that he was going to die from the way that he talked. The things that he said. I think he knew because it was like he was getting ready for death in the words that he said. He had so many regrets. He had so many things he wasn't able to accomplish. And he had a longing to travel. Travel was one thing that was really important. So he's walking in the mountains now of Alaska. He's still here. He's still the family man of taking care of his family. But, you know, one of the hardest things about grief is that when we lose somebody we love, the shock takes over, the depression falls in, and sometimes you just feel like you need to die so that you can carry on the love that you had, but that's a falsity. Because when somebody dies and somebody leaves you, just their body dies and they move on spiritually. And the one thing they wouldn't want you to do is sacrifice your life because they moved on to their heavenly home. And we're all going to get to our heavenly home eventually. I know I find this video hard to make. <coughs> I'm getting a cold. <laughs> I was writing down some of the symptoms of um, grief. <laughs> And one of them was a cold, but since the hurricane, the temperature has gotten very cold. So I, I am in a great depth of sadness. And I will do what I do to overcome this depth of sadness. So let me end with a song for Michael. And we know I can't carry a tune. And this is one of my steps in my griefing process is that he loved me to sing to him and he would laugh and he would be so happy because I can't carry a tune or I mess up the song or I sing sad, silly songs. But so this is a step in my grief. And if you want to sign off here before I sing, that's fine. And I love you and God bless you. And please remember to share, subscribe, and thumbs up. Somebody is feeling the same way I'm feeling. And maybe my grief will help them along and we'll both get well. And the sunshine will shine again tomorrow. But, okay. I'm only human. I'm just a woman. Help me believe in what I could be and all that I am. 
Show me the stairway I have to climb. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Do you remember when you walked along, when you walked among men? Well, Jesus, you know, if you're looking below, it's worse now than then. Pushing and shouting, the crowded my mind. So for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show me the way, one day at a time. Sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Lord, help me today. Show me the way, one day at a time. Yes, Lord, help me to be strong. I'm getting up in age. I'm going to lose a lot of people I love along the way. I love everybody. God bless you.